So maybe you just bought a solar charge controller and you're wondering what good is the load section for and how do I set up the dusk to dawn features? Let me show you how in this quick video. I purchased this solar charge controller on Amazon where there's literally a dime a dozen, but I'll go ahead and link this one that I purchased down in the description below. I've also got the instructions here, which are not the easiest to understand, but that's why you're here. So I can hopefully help translate what they actually mean. Just as a quick summary, we know that these first two ports are for connecting the solar panel, both positive and negative to the controller. And we also know these middle two ports are for connecting to the battery. Finally, these last two ports are for supplying power to an external device. This is a 30 amp solar charge controller, which means it can handle up to 30 amps of electricity going into the battery. However, we can see in the manual, it lists a maximum output of 10 amps. So just because this is a 30 amp rated solar charge controller, doesn't mean I can draw 30 amps off the load. This is important to know because you don't want to damage the controller by blowing a fuse or even potentially starting a fire. So knowing that we have 10 amps of output available from this specific solar charge controller, let's find out what we can actually do with those 10 amps. In this case, 10 amps equals 120 watts, which is calculated by multiplying the 10 amps by 12 volts. 120 watts isn't a lot of power, but we can run a few things like a fan, some lights, a DC fridge, or even a little diesel heater. We can power anything that draws under 10 amps or 120 watts. Now that we know what we can power, let's go over how to set up the load and timer features. First, I already have the controller connected to my 12 volt lead acid wet cell battery which remember to always connect the battery to the solar charge controller first before the solar panel or the load. Otherwise it won't function properly. For demonstration, I'm going to be using this little battery monitor as my load, which I also have linked down below in the description. I'll connect it as my load by inserting these little wires into the load section on the controller. Typically, these controllers come with each of the ports already tightened down, so you do have to get a screwdriver to loosen them first, and then you can put your wire into the terminal. Make sure you've got the positive and negative lined up. You can easily tighten each of the ports with a little screwdriver and make sure that they're really secure. On the solar charge controller, there are three buttons. The first one on the left is the menu button. The second one in the middle is the up button, and this is to cycle down. This last one is also for the load section, and it represents that with the little tiny light bulb icon. In the instructions, this is what they have written about the load. Step one tells us how to toggle on or off the load output. So if you want to manually turn on or off the load, just press this button once. It comes on and the little light bulb displays on the display screen and we can see that it's working because my battery monitor is running. If you turn it off, then the load turns off as well. There are three different options for the load output. You can cycle through the menu just by pressing the menu button once. On the fifth screen, it shows you what option you have selected. If you want to change it, long press the menu button until it starts flashing. You can press up or down to pick a number between one and 24. Once you have the one that you want, just wait and let it sit until it stops flashing, and then it will return to the main display screen. Let me go ahead and explain the three different options. If you have the 24H selected, meaning 24 hours, the load will be powered indefinitely until you turn it off. If you select the 1 through 23H option, whatever number you pick between 1 and 23 will determine how many hours after sunset the load will be on. The way it works is when there is no more solar power input, meaning sunset, 
the load will automatically turn on. For example, if you choose three hours and sunset happens right at 9 p.m., that means that it will automatically turn on the load from 9 p.m. until midnight. But if the sunset is at 6.23 p.m., that means the load will turn off at 9.23 p.m. This feature could be useful if you wanted to run some Christmas lights off of a battery. They can automatically turn on when it's dark and turn off whenever you want them to in one hour increments. The third and last setting you can select is 0H. This means the load will be turned on the second the sun rises and starts producing solar power, which is sunrise. The load will stay on until sunset when the solar panels stop charging the battery. Now your solar charge controller is set up and working properly. You're good to go. As a side note, I just wanted to point out that whether or not you have the load section turned on or off, you can use the USB ports anytime. I know some people wished it was also controlled by the timer settings within the controller, but unfortunately it's not. And that pretty much wraps up the video. I hope I was able to answer all of your questions, but if I missed something, please tell me below in the comments. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, please like and subscribe. Stay tuned for my other videos, and I hope you have a wonderful day.